Hello, Acron fans! This is Shadow Fury 33 bringing you a replay match between Nail and Vicarin. These are two very experienced players that are probably the most players that play the most recently. Vicarin is playing Greckham while Nail is playing CISO. This is very typical. Well, actually, it's either this or Nail is playing Greckham and Vicarin is playing CISO, is typically how it goes. So, Nail is. Well, both players look like they're trying to set up their initial perfect starts. Vickering is setting up his RPs to move where they need to be, and Nail is setting up his RPs as well. He is getting a line of RPs on LC, also setting himself up, kind of nice, I like to see this. He is setting himself up so that he can actually have three RPs on these two boxes, on the size of these two boxes, rather than just two. It's really nice to see that. This is something that... it's kind of new. I'm surprised no one's really caught on that before, but it's good to see that people are catching on to that. And Vickering, of course, setting his... Archicus over to the side here, getting Faro and Seppi progening and using them to build the RPs as usual. Actually, putting his Archicus quite far ahead. This is the furthest ahead I've ever seen a player to actually put his Archicus. Not a bad idea, because that's giving vision of the ramp in the area below. But it does mean that there's a bit more of an opportunity for Nail to go through the teleporter station here and just back door from that. So a bit risky, but I'm sure Vicarin is well equipped to handle if that happens. So the Archicus will be able to watch the more common route much more easily, which is this ramp up here. And Nail is pushing towards the future very quickly, fast forwarding, getting more LCRPs and one QPRP, getting Importer, trying to get a factory. He doesn't have the resources for it yet, but he will soon. And he actually does now. Or, sorry, he has 40, 40 LC right now. He will, now he is. Now he has it. He'll be able to build it when he wants. He does actually, however, have the factory built up near his natural right here. So instead of trying to build it near his main, so his main's a bit more vulnerable at the moment. This is at the 218 mark, so Vikran will have... I, he won't really have a way to chronoport back to get there, though Vikran is not one to use chronoport pretty much. And he's actually moved his... he's also moved his triad forward a bit too, so he's definitely pushing his base quite a bit more forward than most players do. I'm not sure if he's expecting Nail to try to backdoor from here, or if he just wants to use this space for some reason. There's really not a huge advantage to it. There's lots of space behind, not as much space ahead. But I'll be curious to see what Vikran manages to do with it. Vikran is a good enough player that I trust he has something in mind. He has something up his sleeve doing this. Now, Nail is building more QPRPs. He does have his factory still set up. He does have his expansion being set up. He is very focused on the expansion. He is basically playing the way Vikran would be playing if Vikran were playing CISO. Surprisingly, Vikran... Well, not surprisingly he's playing Grekum, but Vikran is not going quickly for expansion as Grekum. He is definitely getting RPs, but he isn't actually fast-forwarding through. He's going at normal speed, which is... A little bit odd, a little bit unusual, really. Most players will go at fast forward when just the start of the game. Really, it's just you're doing the economy building or whatever strategy you have to set up, but you want to get further into the future so you have more meta time to redo anything that you may have done, or may have done wrong, or may have been countered. And Nail is setting up a special ops. He does have it in the expansion, natural expansion for Vikran. Vikran has not, however, gone there, but the special ops will be there, so Nail will know when it happens. And Nail getting up an ATHC, also building machinery. And he does have no more RPs in his main base. He has a Marine going from his main base all the way to the Southwest expansion right here in the park. And we do see that the main base has basically been abandoned. Nail is not bothering with it yet. He is focused more on this expansion over in the, well, over in the Northeast, Middle East section of the map. He is... Jumping back a bit, just he does have a bit more built up towards the future, but definitely jumping back. Look, he doesn't have any units that he's double checking from what I can tell. He doesn't have any building commands he's double checking either, but he's definitely focused on this area. He is sending ATHC, that's what he's doing. He is sending the ATHC in to harass and bookmarking this section so he can go back and change around the harassment if needs to or undo it if he has to, knowing when it will happen. Very good idea. Vikarin is still focused on construction, has not, he is fast forwarding now. And he was back to normal speed, like I said, I'm a bit surprised he is not fast-forwarding, because he is falling further and further closer to the unplayable past edge, which at this stage in the game is a very bad idea. You don't want to go near the unplayable past edge until you have a pretty solid timeline of this. And he could have one now. He could have the entire timeline covered with orders, but he doesn't have it yet. So I'm a bit surprised he's going for that. And now there's an attacker to coming in at the blue time wave. That is the ATHC coming in, and Nail is going to be spotting it as it comes in. Actually, it's going to be... Sorry, that's not the ATHC. That is the expansion attempt. The Faro coming in attacking the Special Ops. The Special Ops is able to defend the Faro. 
My mistake. That was actually how that worked. So now Nail knows that Vikram is Vikram. Nail actually didn't know that earlier. He had no re he had no way of scouting it. He actually didn't bother to scout it. And the HSC coming in, hitting the Arcticus, that actually worked out pretty well. Surprisingly enough, this he did go for the station back door, but it didn't end up panning out. The Arcticus did still defend against it. The vision range was just large enough for the HHC. That's quite interesting to note. So keep that in mind. If an Arcticus is right here, it can actually block off the station entrance, at least in a soft way. It can distract units a little bit, even if they're coming in from here. However, it does leave this area open, but that the back side here is always open, so it doesn't make it much, much difference. Now, three Faros coming in and two Seppies. They will be able to take care of the Special Ops once they get around to it. And, oh, Vikran is setting that. He has not attacked the Special Ops yet. The Special Ops is going to engage them, and it is going to die. So, the Faro and, Faros and Seppi have managed to get rid of that Special Ops, but it doesn't matter. Really, that was just for Nail to know when an expansion is happening. So, now Nail knows that Vikran is expanding, but Nail himself has already gotten this expansion pretty well secured. Doing near the unplayable past, he has... The Special Ops is moving away, so he knows when an expansion is going to occur. Moving towards these two little boxes here. Probably won't be expanded to by anyone anytime soon. But he is going to be aware of those boxes if they ever get expanded to. And he's also going to keep the Special Ops alive, because no reason to waste it. And he does see from the ATHC some Tepi Puzzles will be coming in at about... Looks like... Let's see. Vikran's focused at the 448 mark. So Tepi Pods will be coming in. They do... Well, they can detect, so they will be able to see the ATHC and stop it. Dealing with damage it can, but they won't be able to do too much. The ATC won't be able to do too much before the Sepipods stop it. And, of course, the Special Ops is going to be moved away, so there's no reason to worry about it. But that hasn't been propagated quite yet. The green time, or the blue time wave here should propagate it. Now, Nail jumping back. He is at the 427 mark. And his Special Ops, like I said, this has not been moved yet. But, because it was moved around here-ish. And on the three, like, see, 320 mark or so. He's jumping around, double-checking the HHC, not really be able to do much with that. The Marine is building up the armories and importers we saw before, so continue to secure this expansion. This is the security we've already seen. And the Marine, of course, this we saw before, going towards the Southwest expansion. And the Special Ops propagation has not occurred yet, so Nail, this blue time, like I said, is going to save it. So the damage we see... Actually, it's hard to tell. It looks like the damage bars actually would mean the Special Ops has not managed to escape. So it looks like it looks like the special ops actually didn't manage to escape. The HHC didn't manage to escape either, but I don't see the special ops anywhere. I I think that Vikran managed to kill it regardless of Nail's efforts. Oh no no, Nail did save it. Sorry, it's hard to tell because he's not actually viewing it right now. Sorry, Nail did manage to save it. That special ops is definitely alive. Three macrofabs being built up and factory, and another factory in the main base. So the main base actually is being further developed. A marine has been built and is developing it. This is at the 540 mark, actually even earlier than that. At the 5 minute mark, Nail did manage to get another marine there and start building up his main base a bit further. And his... Yeah, he... Vikran is going for more Aryans. He's definitely focusing on the Aryans. Getting the... Here we are, getting Seppi Ligos. Finally, at the 621 mark, he is getting... Seppi Ligos getting the Octopod and Seppi Bot... Sorry, Octopod and Faropod set up to start building them. And he has the legal class coming in at the six minute mark. So he will have definitely have Seppi Ligos very soon. And both players are very focused on the unplayable past edge. Three Seppi Pods coming in to attack. Nail's natural expansion. And Nail has a tank coming in to help defend against it. Nail has a tank and a frigate, actually. They will be able to defend against it decently, but the frigate does go down. The tank will be able to finish them off. But I think this is definitely this is an advantage for Nail. Nail is ahead. He does have more resources. He does have more production capacity. And he does also have, quite definitely, a stronger... Well, he just now is getting a slot unit advantage, but the Seppi Ligos are going to be decisive. The Seppi Ligos are coming in at the 636 mark. They will be ready by the 7 minute mark. And that is going to be the decider right now. If Nail can build up enough, he's getting a ton of frigates. He's definitely focused on getting a lot of frigates. That's currently considered to be the counter to mass Seppi Ligos as mass frigates. And Vikran has not really set up his base yet to counter Frigus trying to assault his base, so to do that you'd have a bunch of reefs and Arcticuses that are all set up so that you the Frigus try to attack them instead of the Seppi Ligos. Easy to distract them. Vikran has not done this, so Vikran will actually have a slightly hard time defending against any Frigus attacks that may come in. Nail jumping to, closer to the present, macroing up near the present, getting getting a bunch of Frigus orders set up throughout 
the timeline towards the present. I like to see this. I'm very glad Nail is doing this. He is mackering towards the present. He is still has way too much money in the bank, though. So the one thing I would say, he could have three times as many macrofabs and he'd be fine. Vikram, on the other hand, is staying towards the unplayable past. He has not done any macro towards the present. Getting a couple Sebi Legos, he has already one Sebi Legos and three Sebi Paws. The Sebi Paws that were attacking the natural have decided to attack the northeast base instead, where Nail has set up. And Nail is... Actually, he's set up pretty much everywhere. At least a, a couple RPs pretty much in every expansion that Vikram has not grabbed, except for these two north boxes and these two west boxes. The south boxes he's taken, the east boxes he's taken, and of course this expansion he's had quite well secured for a while now. And the frigates coming in, they will be able to destroy the Sepi Pods and the Sepi Ligo. No, not the Sepi Ligo, the Sepi Ligo coming in now. Frigate, one of the frigates goes down, the other frigate is retreating, the, all the frigates are retreating, so one of the frigates has been lost, and Vikran is retreating his Sepi Ligo as well. Vikran has now four Sepi Ligos at the 816 mark. Nail is at the 837 mark. He does see the Sepi Ligos, but he has already retreated his frigates, so it doesn't make a difference. And of course, Vikran has retreated the Sepi Ligos, so th that damage is not actually going to have ended up happening. Tornado's coming in to the Middle West expansion that Vikran had. Trying to harass it, doing a decent job, but not really doing a whole lot of damage. And Vikran is going to send in his Sepi Ligos to just destroy that Tornado. We'll be able to make very short work of it. And there is no way Nail can get that out of there. It's right next to the Unplayable Pass. So that Tornado is gone. And the Sepi Ligo is coming towards the southwest base. They will be able to tear it to shreds. Four Sepi Ligo is coming in. Nail jumping back. He is going to be trying... Probably going to be trying to send his frigates in. He does have six frigates. He, like I said, he really could have more. He has a ton of orders being sent for the next three minutes or so. So he does have a lot of stuff set up. He is ready for this. He can do some micro. He doesn't have to worry so much about his macro right now. That's been taken care of. Although, like I said, he really could build a lot more macro fabs and get away with it. If you need, if He needs a bit more importers. That's the only thing. If he has more importers and more macro fabs, he'll be great. The Sepi Ligo is coming in to the southwest base. They are, this is the 9 to 18 mark. This is when we saw them coming in. Now the frigates are coming in to counter again. them. There are about 9 frigates coming in. And the first 6 coming in. They will be able to destroy one of the Sepi Ligos, but 2 of them have died already. One Sepi Ligo has done down. The second Sepi Ligo going down. And now the last Sepi Ligos are going down, but the frigate leader has died. He died a while ago, but Nail jumping back to remarker the battle. He has retreated. He is abandoning this base of the Sepi Ligos, but the Sepi Ligos themselves have also retreated. So Vikran, both players are retreating, not sure about whether or not they can take each other, and deciding it's best to retreat to the units alive. And it seems like both players are retreating based off of the assumption that the other one would win the battle, which is rather interesting. Regardless, Vikran has returned to the southwest base, but Nail has his frigates set up there already. Although Nail... No, he does not. He is actually setting up his frigates towards his main base. He has retreated them back to his... Not main base, but his macrofab line. He has retreated them back to his macrofabs, getting more frigates. And now the Sepi Ligo is coming in. There's half a dozen Sepi Ligo's dead. are destroying this southwest base. And without chronoporting, there isn't much nail that I can do about it. And he is getting Grammys. He's not getting chronoporting. He does not have any means to go about this. Nail jumping back about... 10-3, he's jumping back about a minute from when he was before, and the Sepi Ligos are actually, they've changed their course, they are instead attacking the northwest base, so Vikran is definitely focused on attacking the north, sorry, northeast base, the middle east base here, that is, not the northeast base, the northeast base is actually pretty secure, but the middle eastern base is getting heavily damaged by the frigates, sorry, by the Sepi Ligos, the frigates are not doing anything to attack it yet, Nail jumping towards the future, he is macroing towards the future, and now jumping back to macro, at the, to the 11 minute mark, to micro against these Sepi Ligos. He really needs to send these frigates in, but he doesn't have much to do with that. Now he's sending in. Okay, now he is actually attacking with the frigates. About two dozen frigates coming in. We'll be able to take care of the Sepi Ligos, no problem. He's losing. All the Sepi Ligos are going down, and he's lost about half of his frigates in the process, but still, he had a critical mass of frigates, so now there is there are enough frigates, about a dozen and a half frigates. We'll be able to take care of any Sepi Ligos swarms that Vikram can throw, unless Vikram does a really good job of controlling them in the meantime. So Vikram. And double check. I'm, sh if he wants, I'm sure he wants to retreat those Sepi Ligos. I don't think he can. He is building more of them though. He has five Sepi Ligos coming into the southwest base once again. The 11:46 mark, and Nail is, well, at this point he is just healing up his frigates. He is not attacking that. He's not defending, I should say, that expansion yet. The Sepi Ligos are dealing quite a bit of damage, and I'm a bit surprised that there isn't a lot more going on. Like I said, he needs a few more res importers for the reserves, but he could have more factories build up tornadoes or build up. Tanks and heavy tanks. He does have ground units, so he easily build a ton of tanks and heavy tanks. Now, Sepi Ligo has been intercepted in, in mid-flight, and and the there is an assault going on on the Middle West expansion on Vikran's natural expansion. The frigates are trying to deal with damage they can, but they aren't very good against ground units. So 
They are going to be dealing a whole lot of damage very quickly. However, just sheer numbers of them is going to make a huge difference. Seppies are coming in, and they will be able to deal a lot of damage, and the Frigates have decided to retreat. Figuring it's not worth it. Vicarin is sending a Seppi that goes in. Anyway, he has sent a Seppi that goes in to attack this. This is after Nail has retreated, so... Oh, no, before Nail's retreated, so... Nail will actually... I don't think he'll retreat. It looks like the retreat actually occurs before the Seppi Ligo attack happens. So, Nail will be able to save his Seppi Ligo... Oh, sorry, save his Frigates. Avoid the Seppi Ligos. And he is getting about three dozen Frigates by now. At the 1556 mark, he has about three dozen Frigates. He is in a really great spot for any sort of attack, but it is kind of fragile. And like I said, he does only have Frigates, so a bunch of Seppis would be able to take care of this. Or Aqua Ligos, but Seppis would be better. They are cheaper. You make, make a lot more than faster. So it looks like Nail has no easy means to attack anything, but he does have a lot of frigates, so at the very least he does have a huge amount of attack power concentrated in that. But like I said, he has a ton of resources in the bank. He could get a ton of heavy tanks or a ton of anything. He'd get any unit he wants, really. get massive amounts of them if he built about three or four times as many production structures as he has now. now this map favors massive economy, so it's not a bad idea to do this, but neither player has really done this. Vikran does have... A couple triads. He has a base class triad in his natural. He does have a base and not a full pod class triad, but a Sepi or well, Sepi Ligo producing duo. And now at the 14 11 mark, another Sepi pod attack, another half dozen Sepi pod, sorry, Sepi Ligos attacking the base. And now we jump back to about a minute behind this. So a minute down from this, we do see the frigates are moving out to attack. They actually are going to be under flanking the Sepi Ligos, intercepting them. The Sepi Ligos trying to divide them up. But no, the Sepi Ligos themselves have been divided. And those frigates are scary. Those frigates are frightening. I mean, the amount of frigates that are there is just like a swarm of giant, angry, technological bees. It's going to kill everything with their anti-air power. Thankfully, unlike bees, they don't kill themselves when stinging. More like wasps, I suppose. Regardless, it's a swarm. There's a swarm of frigates that are attacking the natural expansion. Okay, the, now there's expansion being attacked by about 36 frigates. One of the reefs will be going down. Nail has jumped away from this attack. He is not focusing on the attacks, just going to get propagated by time waves. Vikarin is aware of the attack. He is getting taking a lot of damage. This is near the Ampillo Pass. By the way, neither player has any chrono boarding ability. Both players are still only a chrono in their ability to manipulate the timeline, not in their ability to move units around time. But Nail is Nail is retreating. He has decided to pull back this attack. Most of this game has been kind of what you expect from high-level Akron, which is both players kind of testing each other's waters, try, trying to figure out what the defense is, for, trying to figure out what they can get away with, and trying to get away with it as best they can, because right now neither player really has a decisive advantage on the other. Both players are going heavy for anti-air, and neither of them wants the units to die, because it takes a while to produce those units, and you don't want them to die. So both players are trying to figure out whether they can get a decisive advantage and finally push it. At this point, the game will likely be decided by whoever actually gets... Really, whoever ends up getting the decisive advantage near the unplayable past and isn't able to retreat is going to either win if they win that battle or end up losing because they lost all their units. Now Vikran coming in with a dozen Sepi Ligos toward the northeast base will be able to tear that apart pretty quickly and this is about a minute up from the unplayable pass so Nail still has a chance to counter this. Nail is jumping back to that exact point in time a minute before the or minute down near the unplayable past. Now he's at right when the attack occurs at the 1636 mark, and he will be able to stop this if he so chooses, but it doesn't look like he's actually choosing to do that. Instead, he does have his frigates. He has decided to attack this base, but I don't think this is actually causally consistent. I think he's moving away from this. But Vikran, let's see, at Vikran's point in time, his Sepi Ligos are coming in, and it doesn't look like the frigates actually end up destroying the base here. I don't think Nail's going to end up actually doing that. I think that's just... An artifact from the last time wave propagation. Yes, it is. So, Nail's frigates are actually in his base. They did not destroy the expansion. Although, from the looks of it, it looks like they probably could have, given that the expansion was destroyed at that... at sort of that ghost time. They're really... Oh, sorry, the Observer is focusing on that. At that ghost time, the... As you, the frigates is near the present. The frigates were all in the base. The base has been destroyed. So, Nail could destroy that base if he so chose. But he d hasn't decided to do that. And now there's about a dozen and a half Sepi Ligos attacking... Three of them are retreating to the main base, and going back to the 1630 mark, where the first attack occurred, Nail is in fact going for this assault! He is actually attacking the base, he is definitely going for this. This is in the Unplayable Pass, the attack started in the Unplayable Pass, this is this is happening. Nail is destroying Vikarin's southwest expansion with about 48 frigates, there's gotta be at least four dozen frigates in this group, I, I don't even know anymore. But it's 
It's very difficult to count, actually, with the amount of frigates here I suppose I could try. Um, one, two, this, this would take all day. Sorry, anyway, I'm just going to guess about four dozen. And we do have the Sibylus coming in, about a dozen of those are able to, wait, are able to defend against it. So the frigates were able to half destroy the expansion, but the Sibylus managed to defend against it. However, all the RPs are destroyed. Vicarin is not quite as secure financially as Nail is. Nail has tons of money in the bank, so it doesn't matter for him so much. But Vicarin does not. Vicarin is looking kind of shaky right now. He doesn't have any secure expansions. Nail has most of the map right now. And Vicarin only has one expansion. And the two dozen Sepi Ligos... Wow, he's really getting the Sepi Ligo count up, though. But he doesn't have a lot of resources coming in. Regardless, while Nail has, like I said, about four dozen frigates. And is... He does have to worry about the Sepi Ligos, but I think if he flanks them right now, he should be able to just finish them off. And Nail, this is near the Unplayable Pass, by the way, the 1748 mark. Nail is taking a lot of damage in the Southwest Expansion, but he does have tons of money in the bank. His QP is not quite as high, but his LC is massively high. And, of course, his macro has been set up towards the future. And now he's sending his frigates, trying to send them through the train station, and, or like, the teleporter station, and will be likely attacking Vicarin. But he has jumped forward again. He's jumping towards the, towards the future. Looks like he is just checking out, making sure that while well, seeing what's attacking, having this attack here with Vikran, and Vikran's attack is continuing, but he's jumped away from it. He is focused once again on the northeast expansion, not the southwest expansion. And now he's attacking the main, well, the primary expansion that N Nail has. And this looks like it'll probably be a major battle. Although Vikran has decided to move away from it, I think Vikran is going to. No, Vikran is going for this, but he is going to try to assault these buildings first before the frigates actually attack him. Regardless, once these frigates get the wind of it, they are going to attack, and they are going to deal a ton of damage. Sepi Ligos are going down. Looks like the frigates are going to be going to... There's about... See. But for some frigates, the Sepi Ligos are going down a lot faster. There's only about half as many Sepi Ligos, and the frigates are actually not going to flank. Sorry. Nail has changed a bit. The frigates are flanking, getting rid of... or trying to get rid of the Sepi Ligos from behind. The Sepi Ligos are able to escape through the flank. They're moving away from it. About three or four Sepi Ligos did die in the process, but I think the frigates... The swarm of frigates is just too much for this. Like, there is, like I said, at least 48 frigates here. I think... Let's just see. No, I'm still able to select them all. I think Akron has about a selection limit of, I think, 50 or like 50 or 60 or 70 or somewhere in that area. So, once we hit that limit, we'll know how big they are. Well, the Sepi Ligos... Like I said, they're kind of running out. Vikran has jumped back. He has retreated his attack. He is attacking the Southwest Expansion, and... Oh, nice little hidden base from Nail. He is building more armies, building a ton more importers. And the Sepi Ligos have caught wind of it. They are going to be able to destroy that, but it won't make a huge difference. Like I said before, Nail has tons of resources in the bank. He has tons of frigates, and he doesn't have anything to worry about. And these frigates, he just needs to go for one final attack. There's no expansion that Vikran really has that he can use. And the main base has been exhausted. This pretty much is the final attack for Vikran. I mean, he has 200 LC and 50 or 61 QP. That's enough for a few more base class units, but not enough to take care of all of these frigates. Now, what would be enough to take care of these frigates would be a Plasma Cruise Missile if you could get them in while they're distracted by the Sepi Ligo attack, because it would just hit them all, damage them all. As long as they're distracted by another attack in the meantime, he'd be able to kill them. But he does not have weaponry. He has no way of doing this. But if he did, that would be a really cool way of coming back. Anyway, Sepi Ligo is going for one final attack near the Unplayable Past at the 21-24 mark. Trying to take out the Swarm of Frigates from the edges. Able to take out a Frigate at a time, but Nail has not actually focused on this attack yet. Nail is... Well, he is focusing at this point in time, but he hasn't focused on the attack. He is now focusing on the attack, and the Frigates are just going to be able to tear apart the Sepi Ligos without any issue. Although the MFB looks like it hasn't actually been killed. The MFB that was healing them this, whole, this entire time. No matter, though. Nail, however, low on QP. He is still really high on LC. And Vikran attacking the main base. Vikran is going to be trying to damage what he can in the main base, but it's not going to be of much use. The main base has not been particularly useful for Nail for most of this game. Really, this, this is where the importers are, and the main base hasn't been used for anything else. And back to the frigate attack. Another frigate attack is going to be able to destroy the natural expansion. So, Nail has decided at the 2105 mark to destroy the natural expansion of Vikran, and Vikran cannot defend it with the Sepi Ligus he has. They are going to be... Like I said, they are attacking the main base to no avail at the 2141 mark. So, the frigates have destroyed Vikran's only expansion, and Vikran is pretty much just trying to take out what he can... And that will be... But I don't see Vikran getting out of this. Like I said, unless he manages to find some way of getting more resources, just sneak in an expansion, 
build up enough to get a plasma cruise missile to destroy these frigates. They distract them and then destroy the frigates. So you'd have to sacrifice a few Sepi Ligos to do it, but I think he'd be able to pull it off and then, well, if he, if he so chose, he'd be able to slaughter the frigates if the frigates are all distracted by the attack. And that would just be awesome. However, given that he's not doing that, uh, another option, of course, is a Chrono Bomb, because that would allow him to divide and conquer, but I don't think he even has... I think even half of these frigates... If half of these frigates were alive, they still slaughter all the Sepi Ligos, and they have all slaughtered the Sepi Ligos. Vikran has pretty much nothing. He has a couple of more Sepis coming in, but that's nowhere near enough. There is no... Yeah, there is no way Vikran can get out of this. Vikran has completely lost. He has two Sepis going towards... The northeast base, there is nothing he can do. He is completely lost. I mean, another option, of course, against not maybe this many frigates, but just in general against the frigates when they were smaller, would have been a lot of Sepis or a lot of Octoligos. Because, of course, those are ground based anti air, and the frigates are just. Well, they're air anti air. I mean, they're anti air units. They aren't going to be able to damage the ground units as effectively as they'd be able to damage air, and so the ground units are able to just tear them apart. Sepi Ligos are a bit more. They are a bit more generalist, but they are still air units. The frigates are going to be effective against them, especially in such a critical mass. And now the frigates are going for a final push. Nail going for a final push through the teleporter station. And will be finishing up this game. He will be able to destroy, destroy the RPs, just tearing apart everything. All the buildings will be going down in seconds. The 2354 mark, this is when the final attack occurs. Vikran is well aware of this, and there's nothing he can do. Except watch his base be destroyed, and... Well, Nail has said GG, but Vikran hasn't actually officially surrendered yet. Doesn't matter much, though. The, yeah, the amount of damage coming in, he has been just completely obliterated. The frigates are tearing everything apart. Nail jumping towards the back. Let's see, he's trying to figure out... Apparently he lost some infantry at some point, I guess. Sepi Ligo. Either he just can't find them, or... The Sepi Ligo was... I had managed to destroy them at one point in time and get that gone undone. That was a very interesting game. So, lots of use of frigates and Sepi Ligos. I think, just watching this, that really that wasn't the definitive way to go. I mean, yes, Nail did win with a critical mass of frigates against Sepi Ligos, but Vikran could have gone for Octoligos or Sepis or weaponry and then on one of those big attacks where they came together and actually clashed, fire off a plasma cruise missile if it was an attack that couldn't really be. Actually, especially if it was an attack that couldn't really be undone, the PCM travels back in time, so that it would have been able to actually destroy the units when they were distracted. As a result, he would have been able to kill off all of those frigates and then just start wreaking havoc with Sepi Ligos, and possibly with any other units he may have built, but still, the Sepi Ligos would have been able to just finish it off. However, he did not have the technology to do that, and it's kind of unfortunate he didn't, but that would have been an awesome way of doing it. The other way, of course, would have been simply to focus more on ground-based anti-air for the frigates, because See, Sepi Ligos are hard to counter with ground-based anti-air, due to the fact that they are air, and they have very long range, and they're still very powerful against ground. While frigates aren't quite as powerful against ground, they are a little bit... Well, they deal about 7 DPS per ground, or against ground, versus... Let's see, it was 94, so that would be... Because this is damage per 5 seconds in the stat box here. So 35 is 7 damage per second, 94 is going to be about 19 damage per second against air. That is a much greater difference, and when you consider that Octoligos are quite tough, and Sepis in large numbers have enough splash damage, the frigates are quite small, so splash damage from the Sepis would be quite effective against them. You could easily destroy a massive amount of Sepi, or frigates with enough Sepis or enough Octoligos. So, ground based anti air would have then forced Nail into a more diversified unit, more mixed strategy, and that would have been more interesting, but. Like I said, Vikran, we kind of see here something of the limits of pure Sepi Ligo versus Frigate. There is a point where Frigates will simply have critical mass. And it's important to note that. So, it'd be nice to see more use of super weapons against large armies like this. It is, it is a counter. It is a designed counter for large armies. Not for bases so much as for armies. And also, like I said, just a more diversified unit setup. More anti-air on the ground would have been quite effective. I think. I mean, maybe I could be wrong. Maybe this has been tested before, but it does seem like against this number of frigates, well, not this number so much, but half as many when he had half as many frigates, you'd be able to just counter it pretty effectively with ground-based anti-air. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, and have a good night, everyone.